thank you all so much for being here tonight. Um, I, uh, I would love to hear um, a little bit about the, the origins of this project and sort of how it all began uh, from you, Seth. Sure. Um, so I wrote this with my longtime friend and co-writer, his name is Will Tracy. And so there are two things. Uh, he was on his honeymoon in Bergen, and he took a boat to a restaurant, and he's kind of like a claustrophobe. And he turned to his then wife and said, what if this goes wrong? <laughs> and he also felt, you know, we're entrusting our lives for the next four hours to these strangers who we don't know. And he said that would be probably a good setup for a movie in the most simple, simple terms. Yeah, it's, it's a cool setup. What we wanted to say, how we wanted to say it, we'll be there. That all came later, but then also when Will and I we rode together uh, at the Onion, and we were we lived in Chicago for for a second, and oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, Woo! yes, and so uh, we went to a restaurant in Chicago called L Ideas, and the reason we went there was because the chef at that restaurant, his name is Philip Foss, and it's a Michelin star restaurant. It's an amazing restaurant in Chicago. Philip Foss is not like Ray Fiennes, but <laughs> Philip Foss wanted to hang out with the onion just to see how we put the onion together. And that was like so fucking cool. And because he just wanted to see how creative people put out a creative product. And then Will and I went to his restaurant and it was very similar, limited seating, and he would come out before, now his, the style of his restaurant was much, much more warm, much more rustic, uh, but he would introduce every single dish. And from there, Will and I just thought, oh, that's a really good structure for a movie. Um, yeah. I'm gonna do everything in my power to not say things like, this movie is so delicious, it's a feast for the senses. But you just did! I know, I didn't know myself, I didn't know myself. Um, but really, um, Ethan, it is such a beautiful, kind of strikingly, unusually beautiful film, and I'd love to hear a little bit about the sort of influences and the, the DNA, how you approached it visually, starting to kind of put it together. Um, my, my journey on this movie begins with a last minute uh, table at Noma, the best restaurant in the world in Copenhagen four years ago um, on Christmas Eve, which unbeknownst to me was the last night they would ever serve that menu. And um, the seven course, three hour dinner turned into a 16 hour um, upstairs and downstairs losing sight of each other, dancing and drinking and hanging out and taking us to the root cellar and the dry cellar and watching ant enzymes ferment and deer moss and um, magic happening. I was like, I, I have to somehow find a way to make food and film unite. Um, so when I got this incredible script, I couldn't believe my luck. And the goal here was to use everything from every destination restaurant I'd ever been to, which um, really filmmaking and food making are the same thing. I mean, Seth's brilliant screenplay, Will's brilliant screenplay, takes a five course meal and turns into a five act screenplay. And I always felt like um, if I didn't production design for movies, I would, want to make, um, I would want to design restaurants because um, you transport people to a temporary place for two hours, it's ephemeral, it's theatrical, and then it's finite. And that always, to me, made sense. So Chef is obsessed with the perfectionism of nature, so the restaurant has to be um, harvested from all the materials on the island. I love the idea that all the materials would be treated the way a chef would treat materials. The wood is pickled, burnt, blanched. Um, I thought that was a really fun, unique way of approaching architecture and um, and you know then of course the design of the food uh, influenced every design choice in the restaurant it was like the greatest job a production designer could ever get uh, Amy I um, I I think your character to me is one of the least morally decayed people <laughs> dining there if I can go so far um, I'm curious with so much kind of like wonderful, cinematic, fun, moral rot at play in this movie, how you kind of approached that character and the sort of um, humanity and also complicity in sort of where she is. Complicity is a good word. I think what we, Seth and Will and Mark and I, decided that um, Felicity's mother ran Sony and so she was sort of play acting at a career with, you know, John's character. Um, like, like a lot of people do, who maybe are born into, you know, certain kinds of um, privileged families. 
And so the whole backstory is kind of like, um, if, if she is, you know, she's starting this new job, I'm not making any fucking sense. She's starting this new job as like co-EP development, whatever, and she can't even really describe what the job is. So I think it's just, you know, she went to Brown, she had no student loans. So I don't know, did she deserve to die? I don't know. But I do think that, you know, at some point you're faced in your adult life, you're faced with, am I, am I part of the problem or am I part of the solution? And I think Felicity was very comfortable in being part of the problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, Nick, I think your character, Tyler, is one of the fully morally brought in the Unquestionably. Um, uh, but also, you know, I think one of the things that's, that's um, you know, impressive about this film is, you know, you're, you're really invested emotionally in everyone, even as they are sort of monstrous in various ways. Um, how is that like for you as a performer kind of coming to that character? Oh, uh, um, yeah, it, definitely once you find out all the decisions he's made to end up there and what, what he's done to Anya's character, it's, it's definitely <coughs> debatable um, where his moral compass is. Um, but then I guess there's a thing with him where I, I think he's just been slightly brainwashed by, by Rafe and, and the environment and, and, and the world he's in and wants to be part of. And, and so he's made decisions, I think, that brought him to that place that seem, in his mind, fair. But obviously from the outside judging they aren't. So I think that's how, in my mind, I, I condone it, I guess, somewhat. Um, and there's a little bit of sadness in that, I think, from, from him as a character. Yeah. Um, Seth, I mean, another thing I really loved about this movie is I, I feel like you um, get at a lot of different sort of parts of social satire through these different characters who sort of act as prisms into different sort of forms of commentary. You know, Nick's character, there is a piece of that sort of toxic, blind fandom in yeah. that. Um, you know, Amy's character is a, a really great example of like, just the sort of um, Hollywood satire. Um, She's born on third base. What's that? She's born on third base. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Perfect way of saying that. He's yeah. a writer, I think. Uh, so, um, so, you know, what were the things that were kind of important to you guys as you were writing that you really wanted to say with this, that you were able to use these characters as vessels for? Yeah, I, I think that. I know that the, the phrase, eat the rich, is thrown around. I think the fact that they're wealthy is a way in, but ultimately I think what Will and I want to talk about is entitlement. And you can be entitled, entitled if you're not rich. I mean, you can be an asshole if you're not rich, right? I think, I think people watching the movie sometimes, even if they're not maybe as rich as those people, they might see themselves up there, maybe on the tech bro side. They might have treated Wait, staff not so great in their time on this earth. So I think it was just getting at entitlement and then also the consumption of content and just the way these people are unsatisfied and just need to consume and consume and consume content. And if you're a chef, the content that you create is, that's your art, food is your art. And the way these people, and there's some lovely shots in there that mark uh, uh, shot of just these people blowing through this food. And that's why he's saying, please taste it, appreciate it, relish it. But there's John's character just slamming right into it. So I think, though they're all rich and wealthy, I think a lot of us kind of blow through content and maybe don't appreciate everyone who produces it for us. Um, and that's kind of, that's, we, I think we're really trying to say in some aspects. Yeah. We should taste the content a little more. Yeah, enjoy the content. <laughs> Stay for like five seconds and enjoy the content. Yeah. Um, Ethan, how was it um, <laughs> shooting this film in uh, in Savannah and sort of assembling the, the pieces of the production here? What was that like? I always feel like my job is to pretend I'm somewhere else. Um, we were supposed to shoot in Scotland when I first got the call, and then, of course, three weeks later they said, so we're, we're going to Savannah. <clears throat> and we are still going to set it in Scotland. <laughs> 
or the Puget Sound or wherever most three-star Michelin well, restaurants are. Well, wherever it was, it was not supposed to be as hot on the dock. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Nick was not supposed to be sweating as much. No one was supposed to be as hot as they were. And we were hot, and we did a good job not being hot <laughs> on film. When you read a script like this, you think you're going to build a restaurant, and that's that. And uh, when I watch the movie, I'm like, I'm horrified, because every shot is completely done. We brought in six trucks of Italian cypress and topiaries and English ivy, and we're just trying to fucking hide the marsh wherever we go, you know? Like, like I, I feel like I was on my hands and knees, like, getting rid of <laughs> dried ferns and Spanish moss. Um, and uh, you just don't know that when you get a call for a movie. Right? But, uh, but at the same time, what happened was, uh, unwittingly, we created an island. We built a miniature, and then we built the fucking island. And everything that they do, every stop they go on, they're going further and further down the rabbit hole, and we got to sort of articulate that. So, you know, they show up at this, this dock with this boat, we built the entire interior of the boat. They walk through the, the agricultural fields, they walk to the, um, the barracks. They walk to the smokehouse, it's all so controlled, and chefs like obsessed with detail and nature, and we had a really good time experimenting with, okay, if you're obsessed with nature, and you're obsessed with this perfectionism for it, what if you tried to imitate it and in the process destroyed it? So it's like, it's really fascistic, because he's got these like white limestone paths and black mulch and this angular facade, and it doesn't look anything like nature. So that's what's so interesting about what he does, is he thinks he's inspired by the land around him, but he just destroys it. Um, I would love to hear from you both about the, the experience and the you know, camaraderie on set of working with this incredible group of actors. I mean, it's such a stellar cast, um, and you have some really you know, incredible theater actors and, and, you know, people that it's just so fun to see kind of spar with one another. What was that um, environment like, creatively? Well, we shot in order, most of it. So that, that was such a... <laughs> <laughs> um, we shot in order, which is uh, such a privilege. Um, and it kind of felt a little bit like summer stock. I don't know if it felt that way for you, Nick. Uh, or just like, like a fun theater camp of some sort. Um, and obviously, you know, the first day, I don't know if you felt this way, but I was really nervous to just be around like people that I had watched for years, had seen on my screen or at the movies. Uh, so I had to get over that. And then um, once I did, it was just a master class every day. And, and I mean, Nick would never say so, but the, that scene we shot with you and um, Rafe, was literally like a master class. It was just so brilliant that day. And I mean, it showed on camera, but also to watch it live was really special. And then the next day you weren't, you like, have, I guess you wrapped after that, or maybe you just had the day off, and Mark came in and he was like, I just need to say, Nick's work yesterday was amazing. We're like, he's not here. Um, but, you know, it's, it's really, everybody's on their A game, and it really is just so inspiring, and it levels everybody up. I second all of that. <laughs> uh, no, you know what was really fun that I forgot until just now and you told me is that sometimes they'd have the camera set up where you'd, they'd shoot like on our table with one side and then they'd go to your table and shoot like some, and the same kind of bits of scenes but going back and forth. And all I can remember was at times like the crew would be like, I'd, I'd be sitting at my table like waiting whilst they replace the food for my next take. And I could see all the crew behind the camera watching your guys' table with the version of the scene. Just dying with laughter, dying with laughter, they were loving it. Like everyone was like, this is the best thing. And then, and then out of my periphery, whilst I'm doing my bit of the scene, once they come back over to my side, I can see that no one's laughing. Oh. <laughs> like, oh God, do something fun, come on. And the guys are improvising and riffing, and that was another big thing, was it, there was a lot of improvisation, I guess. Because mm. like, Mark, the director, wanted it to feel kind of gospel parkish, like everyone's alive the whole time in there. So like day one, I went in there and I was like, all right, I've been eating at some nice restaurants. I've got a little bit of improv lined up for this. Don't worry, I know this character. Like eight hours later, I'm like, Annie, you got anything? I'm like, no, I got nothing. Day two, I'm like, all right, well, this is, I can't like, improvise being at this dinner for eight weeks. <laughs> I try. I know we have um, a lot of SCAD students in the house tonight. <laughs> They all work 
and Savannah Love for here tonight. You know Some, there's some really cool moments that Mark captured with them, especially when they're watching Nick cook. Just the deadness in their faces. I, I'm not so good. Intimidating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No, it, it, it's great, and thank you guys for, for your work. Um, I, uh, I know some of you may be um, speaking to, to students while you're here, but I'd love to hear if, if there's anything you learn through the making of this movie or some, some wisdom that you've gathered in your career that might uh, be, be helpful to some of the students who are here tonight. Ethan? <laughs> um, boy, yeah, I, making the menu is, ex I mean, this is my first, this is my first movie. Uh, so I was, can we get a round of applause for that? <laughs> But it took a really long time 
for me to, to get into this kind of work where you really just, like I read the script and I was like, well, they're gonna cast me when I'm on Earth. Um, and I auditioned a lot and I didn't get cast a lot. But to go through the piss pies of the entertainment industry and say, no, I want apple pie, and waiting and waiting and auditioning and auditioning, eventually they will relent and you will get your apple pie. Um, so I don't know, I was just thinking about like how far, it's easy to, you know, to, to just focus on um, where you are, but it's, it's important to look back. Because five years ago, I would have never dreamt that I could be in a movie of this caliber. Um, so I guess what I learned is that good work is good work no matter where you do it. If you do it on a sitcom, if you do it in your backyard for your grandparents, if you do it on a fine movie like this, um, just take pride in it. And um, don't give up. So much, of it, so much of it is just being the last girl at the dance, you know? Woo! I don't have any better advice than that. <laughs> to, just get it, to be honest with you, that's, like, that's all good advice. I, I can say for, for me, like, one thing that I really love, like, yeah, you just gotta, you just gotta care about it and love it a lot, all of it. But then also, it's like, for me, the, the really nice thing is exploring. And like, I didn't really know anything about food or the food world before this script. And so it's like, it's all about meeting people, traveling, and then learning all these new worlds, and then you just carry that with you to the next thing. So even when you're not doing what it is that you love, even when I'm not acting, I'm kind of still in my mind doing something that's like, eventually one day gonna end up in a character down the road. So it's all about like, just, ah oh man, it's got me. The journey. <laughs> it's about that growth. <laughs> you know, it is, but that, and so that's the thing. I just, you know. Are you reading like a huge book about like acting? Uh, uh, I do. I do for dummies. I do for dummies. I do for dummies. I do for dummies. It's cold. Like, between takes, you have to do this an enormous book. Or was that Janet? That was like food writing or like something really dense. Oh, no, I read Anthony Bourdain's book, but that was kind of small. Oh. It was a great thing. Yeah, I didn't have a big book. But you know what? He didn't stop learning. Just explain that. Enjoy. My advice is to listen to Ethan about this vibe. That's great. Um, I think that's about all the time we have. Thank you so much.